explaining the significance, in my opinion, of the globalization and exchange of products and ideas and the impact this time period had on not only the history of Japan but the world as a whole. The Tokugawa era was named after the Tokugawa shogunate, whose clan united and ruled over Japan as military warlords starting with Tokugawa Ieyasu who took power in 1603. The System of Daimyo the Tokugawa era was also known as the era of peace and during this era a new social caste system arose. This system created three major classes in the daimyo. The Shinpan. The top ruling class was known as Shinpan and consisted of direct and indirect descendants of the Tokugawa Shogun. The Fudai. The class directly underneath them were composed of descendants of those that were loyal to I. A. Iyasu before he took power in 1603. This is the class for pretty much everyone else and consisted of other clans that could have been either allies or enemies at the time of their takeover but were now his vassals. The end of the Tokugawa era, approximately 1854 through 1867. The end of the Tokugawa era had seen a large expansion in the amount of schools that could be found across Japan. These schools were largely independent of one another and had no standardized requirements as a whole. The transition, Meiji Restoration Educational System backslash. The Meiji Restoration era brought along many outside influences and ideas. By the end of the second decade of the Meiji Restoration period the government had created national system of schools that brought a quality standard to the education of students nationwide, which was a large change from the Tokugawa era. The Meiji Restoration on January 3, 1868 the decree for the restoration of imperial rule was put into effect, effectively restoring power to Japan's emperor. Meiji Tenno ruled from 1867 to 1912. The 16-year-old emperor whose name was Matsudo selected the name Meiji which meant enlightened rule for his name and the name of the period. Meiji Restoration Systematic Changes in this period Emperor Meiji abolished the daimyo system and instead divided the land into prefectures and transformed Japan into a modern industrial state. Westernization In doing so, Japan fully opened up to the world in a significant way and rushed to transform their military, banking, industrial and taxation institutions to follow Western models. In a short period of time and by the emperor's death Japan was a model example of rapid and successful industrialization and had earned a major seat on the world stage. Why is this significant to history? This significant change in leadership and willingness to open up to foreign goods and ideas and westernization lead Japan to become an industrial powerhouse. Without this reformation Japan may have stayed in its dark ages and fallen behind the rest of civilization in education and in technology. Without this opening of borders and sharing of ideas we may not have some of the common gadgets and luxuries we know and love today. If Japan never standardized education then we may not have ever experienced some of our favorite and most memorable childhood memories such as playing your Sony Playstations, singing karaoke on a machine, VHSs and who would want to live without Pokemon and anime. On a more serious note. Japan has influenced the world immensely since their rise out of isolationism that was so prevalent in the Meiji era. Becoming a powerhouse industrial force allowed them to take on their own imperial ventures and invade China, Korea, the Philippines and more in World War II. This is just one of the major ways that this era proved to be significant to the world's history and technological advancements. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed my documentary on the long-lasting effects of the transition to the Meiji period.